in the last stream. We began our adventure here in the sky, starting with only a tier two blood altar, and we expanded out the base to include two big old five by five water wheels with a bunch of cogs coming off it to power our sifter, our press, and our mixer, along with previously an encased fan, which I have taken down between episodes because I didn't really like it kind of floating in the air, much like our spruce tree, which is also still floating in the air. But right at the end of the last episode, we got ourselves the lightning charge, which has now unlocked the ability for us to get the cobble generator and an easier recipe for dirt. We also got our nature essence and our first grass blocks. And I do think that the first thing that we should work on in today's stream is going to be to get maybe some cow seeds going, because if we want to survive going forward, we're going to need food. We've almost burned through the entirety of the nutrient bar stipend that we were given at the start of the pick. And so we need to find a new source of food and quickly. And I think the cow seeds could provide that for us. To make this, we need four nature essence and we need one block of dried kelp. As we saw in the last episode, we can dry kelp using the encased fan with some fire in front of it. The mistake that I made in the last episode is that I smelted all of the kelp instead of using some of the kelp to grow more kelp. And so what we should do is we should take away our sift there, which has been working between episodes on sifting the gravel that we put into it. So we do now have uh, more resources that'll help us in today's stream. But what we should be able to do here, as we did last time, is once again, throw down a bucket of water to waterlog this sieve. I think what I might do here is I might get a shaft and kind of move this down by one. Like if we do this and this, we can then put the sifter right here, which means we can probably do something with the water kind of just here, which I think is gonna be more sensible. For example, if we just do this and this, the water still flows out, which is a little awkward, but at the very least we can then do this and we can do this. And with that, we can start once again, straining our dirt, which we can now make much more easily than before, thanks to that new recipe involving the lightning charge. And as soon as we have at least one kelp, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna dig out the bottom of this unlimited water source here. And I'm gonna make this into a little bit of a deeper kind of tank that we're going to use to grow more kelp. Because I believe much like with the sampling in the last episode, we can shift to accelerate the growth of the kelp. And in theory, we should be able to get a lot of kelp in ideally a very small amount of time. Something like this. So now we have a much deeper body of water here with some dirt at the bottom. And the idea is that over here, if we have some kelp, which we do, we can take that kelp, we can place it down like so, and then we can shift to grow that kelp. And if we just continually break one block above the bottom, so long as we don't die to, uh, to drowning, to suffocation, we should be able to get a decent amount of kelp surprisingly quickly. And then look at that, we've got over a stack of the stuff, fantastic. Two benefits of that. One, we can now get a ton of nature essence, which is good. People did point out that uh, if we needed to, we could use the nature essence to make some wheat, for example. Three nature essence does get you eight wheat. That would be kind of an emergency source of food if necessary. But more importantly, we can also take our gearbox. I did make another gearbox between streams. And what I would like to do here, my plan was gonna be to put this here, but I've moved my cogwheel since, which is uh, somewhat awkward. Although, I guess what we could do is we could get rid of this shaft, replace that with a vertical gearbox like so, and then I was gonna put my encased fan down, maybe like here, which isn't gonna work too well for water, but should work, oh no, it's going the wrong way as well, which I don't think works. I think the fan needs to be blowing in order to do the smoking. I don't think it works if it's uh, pulling. The gearboxes, by the way, do change the rotation of the shaft as well. So if we wanted to rotate it back to the other direction, we could do that with another gearbox here, which would just be another andesite casing and some more cogwheels, which should be pretty doable, actually. We do have some andesite alloy lying around here, and we've got all this spruce, which we can use, of course, now to get more andesite alloy. We can pick that up now more quickly with the wrench as well. And cogwheel-wise, we just need more shift and, of course, some planks. Again, the spruce here, not really gonna be used for base building, and so instead we can use it for cog making. And once we have another gearbox, we could then place that gearbox down like this, and that's gonna change the direction of travel for this encased fan. And so now if we uh, use the wrench to rotate it, now it is blowing in the right direction, which is good. We can place down, let's say some dirt. We can then place down, let's say our depot right back over here like this. 
And in theory, now we can once again put some kelp onto the depot, like so. And if we light a fire in front of the fan, we should be able to smoke that half stack of kelp, which should be more than enough in order to get us the cow seeds. Nice, look at that, 36 dried kelp. I'm gonna put the fire out just because our entire base is made of wood and I don't want it to burn down. So boom, there is our dried kelp block. We currently have no nature essence in that chest. That's fine, let's do one, two, and three. Fantastic, that gets us to four nature essence in total. And so now I believe that we can craft this up for the cow seed. And if I'm not mistaken, this I think is kind of infinite cows. I'm glad that it includes all of the quests there so we don't have to make every single seed individually. But if I were to put this down and if I were to get myself a hoe, I believe that we should be able to plant the cow seed. And then I'm hoping that just like with the kelp, we can shift to make this grow faster. The particle effects show, but the growth is still locked at 0% there. So it looks like the shifting might not work on the cow seeds. That is my bad. It does quite clearly say when you hover over it that you have to put it down onto uh, either grass or podzle. Thankfully, we do have grass. Let me take this and we'll put that down for now, right around here. Uh, if we do this and this, does that accelerate the growth? The answer there is still no. I wonder if it needs more space. Plant on grass or podzle to grow the animal. Let me try putting a bit more grass down. We could always make more of this if needs be. It was not particularly expensive. If I do that, does that work? Still doesn't work. Still stuck at 0%. There is, however, a quest here for a watering can. It says watering can is the best way to speed up the animal seed for now. This requires four copper and a bucket. That seems pretty doable. We do have uh, 18 crushed copper in here. For that, we're going to have to uh, put these onto the depot, and we're going to have to, uh, once again, get the somewhat janky water setup going again. We need to uh, get rid of this. You don't have to get rid of the bottom block, but if you don't get rid of the bottom block, then the water just kind of flows everywhere, which is not ideal. If we do this, though, it's still going to kind of flow everywhere, but just in a less janky fashion. Once we've got a ton of copper, we also get some clay as a byproduct there, which is very useful because we are going to need clay today in order to get started with some uh, Tinker's Construct to get the smeltery and to get the furnace down here as well. This requires that uh, smeltery controller. Either way, once we have at least four copper ingots, that should be everything we need to make the watering can. Nice. We can then go ahead and I believe, shift right click on an unlimited source of water to pick that up. And it says press V to change mode. For now, single block I think is fine for us. So if we shift right click on the animal crop here with the watering can look at that so these are really nifty crops in that they actually just grow the animal itself they don't grow like cow essence or anything like that they just grow an actual cow and so once this is fully grown i believe that we can quote unquote harvest this and a baby cow will be born now it does specify in the book here that we should use ftb ultimine when harvesting so the seed won't disappear so if we hold down the ultimine key uh, which you can change, by the way, options, controls, keybinds, and then type in uh, Ultimine. I've got mine set to a button on my mouse, but if you hold that down and then you right-click, that, that harvests the cow, but leaves the seed. The benefit of that, of course, is that now we can do the same thing again, and we can get another cow to spawn utilizing the watering can. It does take a little bit of time with the watering can here to make this grow, but we do now effectively have an unlimited source of cows. We can summon really as many of them as we like, and that does kind of give us an unlimited source of food going forward. We could probably do with setting up a different area for these cows, because right now they're just gonna roam the base freely, which is, um, is not terrible, but it's also not ideal. They're gonna kind of overrun me soon if I get too many of them. But now that that's taken care of, we'll leave those going for now. We'll let these guys grow up and then we'll probably give them some uh, some wheat to breed them. And uh, between streams, I'll probably look at getting a much bigger uh, cow family up and running. But for now, let's take a look at some of these other quests here. So up at the top, we have the uh, the quests that get us to the smeltery controller, and that's required for us to get the, uh, the furnace down here. We also need a tier three altar. We could do with a cobblestone generator. And all of this kind of starts here with the crushing wheel. So for the crushing wheels, as we saw in the last episode, we can actually make these because we can make stone using the bulk smoking method. So if we were to go ahead and get 
some cobblestone. I'm going to take just a bunch of cobblestone. We'll do like a stack or two. And then over here, we can, of course, once again, uh, pick up our water. Was the, I think the bucket might have been used in the creation of the watering can, which is not ideal, but... I guess real quick, what we should probably do before we move this water again and, uh, and start smoking, we should probably look at quickly processing all of the uh, the crushed ingots that we have in front of the encased fan here. So real quick, let's grab all of the iron. Shift right click, by the way, to pick that up. And then we'll quickly process all of the gold, all of the zinc, and all of the copper. The copper is especially useful because, again, we need grout up here in order to get started with the tinker's smeltery. And the grout requires gravel, sand, and clay. So we are going to need the clay from the copper here and the zinc also produces gunpowder as well which we saw before is required if we want to make one of these fire charges for the cobblestone generator so the gunpowder also useful basically all of the, uh, the little side items that we get here are quite useful i do want to make sure that we dump most of this stuff back into the chest for now because our inventory is getting very full but once we have processed all of that i'm going to get a second bucket which we can now do with all of this iron and we're going to move that water. We should probably look at some point at just getting a second uh, encased fan so we don't have to keep doing this, but let's pick you up and then let's go ahead and light another fire right about here to allow us to smoke all of this cobblestone. So let me throw a stack. Can I put two stacks on there? It looks like the answer to that is no. That's fine. We can do one stack at a time and then let's go ahead and quickly do one of these. Okay, so this is not working. I think the reason it's not working is that the fire doesn't last that long. I think I'm just trying to do too much at once. If I put 16 on here, instead of 64 and then i do the same thing again i'm hopeful that that might finish i think when the fire goes away the uh, the craft might restart and so given that we don't have any netherrack right now we can't do that much stone all at once there's the 16 though that's perfect so we could do another 16 potentially if we reset this it's also quite possible that 32 might work uh, we might have been pretty close with 64 but just like not quite long enough on the fire either way we do have uh, 16 stone here which is more than enough in order for us to get the crushing wheels so the crushing wheels are pretty big. We have to find space for them. Uh, they also need the water wheels as well, which thankfully are not too difficult, as we saw previously. I do need, uh, I think just one of those, actually. I made two, but I think, uh, yeah, you get two at a time here, which is very nice indeed. Let me get more of that uh, spruce. We'll craft those down into planks. Let me get another large water wheel, and let's get the crushing wheels. Cool. So these are interesting. Did this work? It did. Nice. Okay, so 32 stone also works. It's just 64 that doesn't. So the crushing wheels need to go down, and they need to face in opposite directions right next to each other. They need to spin in opposite directions right next to each other to allow us to crush items that we've dropped in the top between them. So for then, mm. we'll probably do it somewhere around here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna temporarily steal this um, gearbox here. And I think what we'll do is we'll put down a gearbox like this. We'll put down one of our crushing wheels, let's say right about here, like this. That is gonna overstress us, that's fine. If I get rid of this, does that bring us back online? Mm. It doesn't. In this scenario, we might just have to look at, um, in fact, I don't even know. Oh, no, I moved the cogwheel, so this wasn't doing anything anyway. Uh, that is problematic. We're going to have to fix that. But uh, we're probably going to have to either lower the speed or increase the stress. So there's two things we can do here. The lowering the speed thing is tricky, simply because we have so many cogwheels. And if we wanted to lower the speed, we'd have to get rid of some cogwheels, which would mean moving kind of everything. Alternatively, if we want to alter the speed, we can look at getting the rotation speed controller, which is usually kind of a mid-game create item. However, given that we can get brass so easily, and given that we actually already have brass from the first episode, the rotational speed controller here for us shouldn't be too difficult. We do need one brass casing, which we can make in the same way you make andesite casing. We place down a log, we strip it, and then instead of right-clicking with andesite, we right-click with brass. Other than that, we need one small cogwheel, one large cogwheel, one shaft, and then one iron wire. This is the only tricky part of the rotational speed controller. Mm. This is mm. made in a rolling mill with an iron sheet. The rolling mill requires andesite alloy, shaft, iron plates, and andesite casing. Most of that is pretty straightforward. We just need some more andesite alloy for that, which of course is just some more uh, work over at the blood altar here. And a few more andesite alloy litter. That's another andesite casing. And I think that's basically everything, apart from two more iron plates for us to get the uh, the extruder. So let's do you. And of course, let's uh, for now do this. We'll take that back just to allow this to actually get its work done. Fantastic. And I think that should be everything for the rolling mill. It is. Nice. The rolling mill does require kinetic energy. I think it might go in the bottom. Let me... 
do this. Oh, maybe not actually. Where does this take its energy from? It might just take it kind of in line like that. Yeah, it does. Okay, that's fine. Again, too much stress currently, which is awkward. I might have to pick up the mesh temporarily. And that's still over stressed, which is not ideal. Let me, uh, let me clear my inventory out a little bit. We've got too much stuff clogging us up right now. And then we're going to have to move a lot of this stuff anyway once we get the rotational speed controller down. So let me go and do this. Perfect. That's got that thing spinning. And then we just need to take some iron and place that into the top. Much like with everything else, I'm fairly certain that we can just drop that in. Ideally, you do want to make sure you drop it in to the top. Fantastic. And that should turn... Oh, it turned it into an iron rod. Hold on. What do I need to do to get the iron wire? Oh, I need to drop an iron plate in, not an iron rod. That is my bad. Let me uh, throw this back in here. Let's take the iron ingot. Annoyingly, I have just gotten rid of the uh, mechanical press, but that's fine. We can replace that down temporarily to get an iron plate. And once we have that iron plate, we can then once again replace this with the extruder. And it probably makes sense, actually, to put it here instead of up where we can't drop items easily onto the top. That should get us the iron wire. And once we have the iron wire, that is basically everything for the rotational speed controller. We just need one small cog wheel and one big cog wheel. And the benefit of this is that it allows us to change the speed of the water wheel without any of this big cog wheel, small cog wheel tomfoolery. So if we go ahead and pick up everything here, including the gravel, what we should now be able to do, if we uh, free up a little bit of space in our inventory here, is we should be able to use this rotational speed controller to increase the speed coming out of the water wheel. What we're going to do, we're going to place it down like this. And essentially by default that's going to pass straight through what i might want to do though is i might want to take a gearbox and put that down first so if we put a gearbox down and we want this to be a normal gearbox not a vertical gearbox so i'm going to put that down right about here what i'm then going to do is i'm going to put the rotational speed controller let's say here because the rotational speed controller requires a large cogwheel in it so you right click the cogwheel and it goes into the top of the rotational speed controller and essentially what we can do here, and I'm going to get rid of this water because otherwise I'm going to fall into the void accidentally. But uh, what we can do here is we can look at this number and if we click and hold, there we go. Oh, I see. So they've changed. It used to be that you'd look at this and you'd scroll up and down with your scroll wheel. Now you look at it and then you hold, right click. Cool. And then you can set the number on here. So by default, it's set to 16. If we set it down to one, you'll see this goes very slowly. But of course, we can pull shaft off this to power all of our stuff. If we hold right click and go up to 256, it's going to spin very, very quickly. And essentially, this is doing the exact same thing as all of those cogwheels did, but in a much smaller, much more compact setup, which doesn't look anywhere near as terrible. And so real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of most of what's here. And I will also pick this up as well, actually, making sure that it doesn't fall into the void by using the wrench. And I'll quickly replace some of the holes in the ground. What I think we'll do now, though, is probably pick this up and i think i'm going to quickly put down at least one maybe two more water wheels just to make sure that once we put kind of everything down we still have enough stress capacity to keep everything going in fact what i think i might do here i might build a bit of like an amendment to our current platform i might be a little new platform kind of just off the edge of this one to put down some more water wheels because i think it could be sensible for us to make maybe five or more water wheels and put all of those down out here especially if we build a platform that's easily expandable in the future and then we can have all of our main machines on the main platform because we can just pull the uh the shaft off of the side of the water wheel and kind of bring it around i think that would be sensible i've gone ahead and made some more wood essence here if we combine that with some more of the nature essence which we can of course get from our kelp we can somewhat quickly get ourselves a uh, dark oak sapling and a regular oak sapling so that we can more quickly expand out in the future without having to use so much of the blood altar. And uh, just like we did before with the spruce sapling, we should be able to plant these down and then give them a quick shift. Fantastic. And then we can just go ahead and chop the whole thing down. I'm going to make sure that we use a fresh X for that because if I try and do it with that, I'm going to end up with another half tree. And there's only so many half trees that you can have. All right. So we built a new little area over here and the setup is basically the same. We've got two water wheels so far with the water underneath them. And then coming right off that, we've got our rotational speed controller over here. We've got uh, some gearboxes. We've got our mechanical press. So we've got a, a regular gearbox and then, oh, sorry, a vertical gearbox, then a regular gearbox, then the mechanical press. And then somewhat awkwardly to get the mixer here because the mixer requires a cogwheel. You can't just uh, 
shaft into it like you can with a mechanical press. What I've done is I've gone kind of across and down. You can connect the cogwheels like this together and then like this. So if you need to go like across and down, the cogwheels can be easier than gearboxes sometimes. And uh, that's got that connected as well. You'll see right now this says that it has a speed requirement. So right now our speed controller is not going fast enough to, uh, to actually let the mixer work. That's fine though. Over here, we can uh, hold our right click and make it a lot faster, maybe 64. That'll probably be fast enough for this to work. It totally is, fantastic. And the idea now is that we can just add more water wheels here up to a total of nine of them if we want as we go forward. Also, people have pointed out that something I completely forgot about, you can right click, I believe, not like that, you can right click logs onto the wheel to change the color. Do you have to shift right click on these? Hold on. Nope, I believe you can right click on the water wheel to change the color, but I have completely forgotten how you do it. You do it with planks, that's how you do it. Look at this, this looks so much nicer, in my opinion. So if you just right click with a plank on the wheel, it matches the color, cool. And so I have gone ahead and made a few more andesite alloy here. We should be able, I think, fairly easily to make some more water wheels. I have also made another double chest as well here because we are very light on space, or were at least very light on space. Let's go ahead and make a few more of these. Let's craft all these down into planks and then let's do you know what, sure, let's do five more of those, and then we can just very quickly upgrade to five of these, and then we'll go ahead and place these down. Thankfully, it doesn't use the plank, so you can just right-click, and you get to keep a plank, which is very nice indeed. Boom, 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 and boom. Cool. And so now, in theory, we should have a ton of capacity, and I'm very tempted just to make the last two, you know. We don't need two more, but given that we've made the space for it, and given that we're basically there on the final two, I feel like just to get it out of the way, we might as well go ahead and craft them just because they're also just so easy to make as well. Let's do this, fantastic. So now we should have a ton of kinetic stress capacity to push forward with the crushing wheels here. So my crushing wheels are in my inventory. Let's go ahead and see about putting these down. So we're probably gonna need some more gearboxes for this. Do I have what it takes to make more gearboxes? The answer is probably no, just because of the fact that we've uh, kind of just spent all of our andesite alloy making more water wheels, but we might be able to make this happen actually. I've got another andesite alloy on me. And so if we do this and pick that up, that should be another gearbox taken care of. And that little next gearbox might be everything we need. I'm thinking we could put one wheel here. That does over stresses right away. The, uh, the wheels are very stress heavy. Uh, someone even suggested getting another rotational speed controller and putting it kind of between the rest of our network and the crushing wheels so that we can slow down just the crushing wheels without slowing down everything else. For now, we're gonna slow down everything else, but we might look at doing that at some point fairly soon. Uh, then if I do this and put down another gearbox, I think that's not gonna work because I think that's gonna have them spinning. Oh no, that totally does work, look at that, perfect. All right, this is good. So these are now spinning in opposite directions. So you just need two gearboxes like this for that to work. And now we should finally be able to look at making some sand. All we have to do is drop gravel or sandstone, but now our case gravel, into the top of that crushing wheel setup. So we should probably go ahead and make some more gravel here using our dirt and stone essence. And then for now, we're gonna have to kind of nerd pull our way up here. But if we go ahead and drop, let's say 32 gravel into the top here, like this, that is gonna slowly but surely get consumed by the crushing wheel. And it should begin to kind of spit out sand at the bottom. Now, one thing we could do is we could look at um, sneaking this up a little bit. It looks like we are pretty close though to the maximum stress capacity, which is, is crazy because we've got so many wheels down now that I would have thought that the uh, capacity would be quite high. Thankfully, we're pretty close to being able to get the engineer's goggles here. Once we have these, we'll be able to get a much clearer picture of where we stand in terms of, of stress units. But there's 32 sand. Now, we could do it getting some glass, but I don't know if we can smelt glass currently. We totally can. Okay, that's perfect because that means we can actually make the engineer's goggles. To smell the glass, all we need to do is smoke the sand using the bulk smoking recipe, which means we just need to find a place to put our encased fan back down with our new line of machinery. All right, so I've thrown down the encased fan again here. We pull the cogwheel off of the mixer because you can pass this through. And then we've got a chef going down into a gearbox. And then we have our encased fan here. And ideally, all we need to do is light this and then drop some of the sand onto here and that should start to cook it. We do wanna keep an eye on the fire spreading to the nearby planks here because that is not gonna be ideal if our base burns down. I did have to disconnect this shaft here because with the uh, the fan down 
and with both of the wheels connected, the whole thing was overstressed. I think the problem is the uh, water. We've only got water on the first two wheels, and so I think we're not getting as many stress units as I was hoping for, but uh, we will get those as soon as we put the water down. This is our last nutrient bar, and so we are kind of a little low on food now. We're also not in a great situation for more life essence going forward, but now that we have the glass, let's go ahead and grab a gold ingot. Let's drop that down onto the depot here to get a gold plate. We should already have the string we made in the last episode. And uh, also, I guess we made a gold plate in the last episode as well, but that's fine. And boom, we have the engineer's goggles, which we can wear to see what is being used. So right now, this is using 288 stress units. Uh, over here, we've got 72 stress units. And if we go back here, 512, and then this is 512, but these all say zero, which makes sense because I've not placed any water down for those wheels. And so I think what we need to do here is just continue to place the water down like we've been doing with the first two wheels. So if I just quickly kind of get rid of these, like so, the first two wheels have water down, like this. Uh, so these produce 512 stress units each. What we need to do is uh, as we go here, we need to continue placing that one block of water for each wheel to allow them to spin. I didn't know if that was required or not because the wheels do spin without the water there if they're connected to other wheels that also spin. But uh, yeah, it looks like that water is required. And so let me quickly throw down just a bunch of water here and let's get all of those wheels back up and running. And there we go, now we have all of these down. Now each one of these is producing 512 stress units in total. And so in theory now, with all nine of these down, we should be producing around 4,500 stress units, maybe closer to 5,000 in total. And uh, we should be able to reconnect that up. We totally can. And again, in theory now, we should be able to kind of pump this up a little bit. Maybe to 48. 48 works, maybe to 64. 64 also works, that's pretty quick for all of the devices that are currently connected. Of course, I would like to get more encased fans because I don't want to have to keep uh, kind of swapping out how we use the fan. This one right now is made for smoking. I'd like to set up a dedicated fan for washing and then eventually a dedicated fan for cooking as well so that we're not continually swapping out water and fire and lava and all that kind of stuff. But now that we have that taken care of, now that we have some sand, now that we have some clay, and of course we have gravel, we should be able to make our first bits of grout. Nice. This recipe down here, is this one more efficient? It's the same efficiency from a clay standpoint, and it's, no, it's not more efficient, perfect. Okay, so there's some ground, 18 of it, perfect. And if we wanted to smelt this, we, I assume, are gonna use the smoker. We are, and that's gonna get a seared brick, perfect. We can then use that seared brick to make the seared faucet, seared heater, seared melter, seared casting basin, and seared casting table. We are kind of working towards the smeltery controller. The smeltery controller here is made inside of this guy, the seared heater. So I think we're going to need most of what's here. I don't know if we need the seared casting table just yet, but the seared melter is definitely required. And that's gonna require quite a bit of seared brick. So let's go ahead and smelt up all 18 grout that we have here. We'll drop all of that on there and light that up. As far as making more grout, we're a little light on clay. We can get more clay via washing sand now. Interesting. I was wondering if we'd have to go with uh, with more copper, but washing sand is actually gonna be a, a fair bit easier, I think. Uh, again, keep an eye on the fire, Isaac. But uh, especially given that we can produce gravel with the essences that we already have. And I also think that now, yeah, we can turn cobble into gravel, which is very interesting. And one other thing that we noticed, of course, previously is that we are able now, I believe, to make this cobblestone generator. So I think this should be the next thing we make. The only thing we don't have really here is the fire charge. And for that, we just need the gunpowder, right? Which I believe we have. I think we have everything we need to make it. Over here, we've got gunpowder, we'll take that. We have got coal, we'll take that. We have the lightning charge, so we can take that. And so that should be everything for the fire charge, it is indeed. That does mean we're gonna have to make another lightning charge if we want to use one, but again, very easy for us to make. We made that in the last episode. And so with that done, I think that's everything for, uh, I think it's called the cobble gen, not a cobblestone gen, so a cobble gen like this. It is indeed. For this, we just need I guess it depends on which tier we want. I think the higher you go here, the more cobble you get. And so I think the tier three one is probably worth going for. We do have quite a few iron nuggets up here that we can, of course, just craft up into some iron ingots. And at that point, we just need a bucket of water. I do believe we'll get the bucket back for this recipe. We do indeed. And now we can place this above a storage drawer. Again, I should probably use my 
spruce for this because we've got a ton of spruce that we're not using for base building and so if i do this we can get a chest we can then upgrade that chest to a draw this is where i want to use my dark oak though because i do wish to have a dark oak draw not a spruce draw if we do three at the bottom three at the top and the chest in the middle we can get a draw which is a chest that basically holds just one item but it holds a lot of that item and then i think i don't know if you need to pump out of this cobblestone generator or if this cobblestone generator will automatically push to a nearby inventory these sometimes work a little bit differently if i do this does this push cobblestone down it doesn't let me see if it pushes cobblestone up i don't know if it'll do that either it might do neither in which case we might need to get oh no it pushes up okay perfect in that case then look at that we have unlimited cobblestone that's coming in pretty quickly and then we can of course take that cobblestone we can drop it into our little crushing wheel here again we could definitely do with maybe some kind of stone around here just to make it a little easier for me to kind of jump up maybe if i do it here it's a little awkward but we can get up to the top we can drop the cobblestone in that's going to get us gravel and then we can turn the gravel into sand if we need to and of course we can use that sand to get more clear we can use all of that to get more sea brick for our smeltery setup nice so no longer do we have to use the essence which is good because we are now out of kind of infinite uses of the sacrificial knife because we don't have any more nutrient bricks so up here what can we make we would need five glass which we don't have if we wanted to make the seared tank there let me do this and let's go ahead and do this while we wait for that i'm going to keep turning more cobble into gravel and then we'll probably turn some gravel into sand as well and then what we're almost certainly going to have to do here is get i'm gonna put that out is uh, get another fan down with the uh, the water in front of it so we can start washing uh, sand into clay because i think that's gonna be our best choice for getting more clay going forward but it shouldn't be too difficult for us to automate this especially if we go and unlock these item pipes here these don't seem too difficult these are the pipes from pipes by the way they've just got a different texture here which i actually quite like but this looks pretty straightforward if we have three redstone which we do we've got 12 we're just maybe a little light on iron of all things because with the three redstone let me quickly get the uh, the sand going here i could maybe do the ladder actually the ladder might be easier than jumping up every time but uh, we'll throw that down we'll get some sand going over here item pipe do we have the ability to make this we've definitely got the cobblestone to make two droppers and then from there yeah we're missing one iron ingot which again shouldn't be too bad actually my thought process here is that if we can get the item pipes we should be able to pipe out of this drawer into the top of the crushing wheel with that you can then use a hopper or some other collection device to collect the wares uh, from the bottom of the crushing wheel i think a chute would also work and then we could feed from that chute all the gravel that we're making automatically into our sifter and if the sifter is getting rotational energy, we could then hopper out of the bottom of that to automatically produce things like iron, gold, copper, and coal, which I think is going to be very sensible. How expensive is the uh, the chute? This one right here. It's three iron, but you get four chutes, which is not bad at all, because I'm thinking if we put a chute here, I believe that will get all of the items that are produced by the crushing wheels. We could then just put our sifter here, and I think that the chute can feed into that sifter and then of course all of the gravel that we get can just go straight into here like that and of course at that point all we need to do is make sure that we're actually getting some rotational energy down to this thing and for that we're probably going to want to grab another cogwheel which we can do of course again ideally with our spruce planks boom and boom one thing we should also do by the way that i've not done yet is we should upgrade this crafting table right now we've got a standard crafting table we can upgrade this to a crafting station i believe all we need for that is some blank patterns like this and i think if you craft a blank pattern over a crafting table you get a crafting station the crafting station is the exact same as a crafting table but you can leave your items in there so if i start doing a craft and then forget that i missed something it doesn't put all the items back in my inventory they stay in the crafting station which i think is superior also the crafting station can access an adjacent inventory so everything in this chest is visible inside of the crafting station which is very helpful here's our cogwheel let's put that down over on the back here like that and then connecting that up could be tricky but it's possible we might be able to connect it up to there and make that work let me see about getting a few more cogwheels here and then if i were to put a cogwheel down here and here and here that begins to spin the sifter you look to see it and at that point i think we're basically there let me get another double chest like this i'm gonna put that double chest down over here my thought process is that we can pipe out of this 
into here. So all of the stuff that we're going to automatically make is going to go into that chest. All we were missing was a little bit of iron. And we do now have that iron, but of course we have to, uh, to wash for it. So the trouble now, though, is I know I said I don't want to have to keep moving it, but we're going to have to move it because I don't think Outside of using the blood altar to get more iron, which we could definitely do, but we don't really have any LP now. We don't have enough uh, food to get our life points up. So I think what we have to do is use this fan once again as our washing fan, hopefully for the last time. So let me do this. Let's once again place that down in front of the fan. I'm going to get rid of the uh, stone here. Let's do that. That's going to allow us to wash the iron. Once we have... Oh, we've overstressed the system. Interesting. Let me just go and uh, try and turn that down. Let's go for 48 again. Still too much, eh? That's interesting. I wonder why that suddenly got so stressed. I wonder if it's because I tried using the fan. Oh, no, it's the water wheels. I see. Okay, hold on. If I do this... Oh, I think I might have messed this up completely because now the water, I think, is flowing in both directions, which is not good. Not good at all. If I quickly throw down some cobblestone, though, like this, that's hopefully going to stop the water flowing backwards. That is still producing the right amount of stress, though. Doesn't look great, but it does work. And over here, this is now done. Perfect. Okay, so back over here. Let's take you out. Let's go ahead and get another two iron ingots. Perfect. Combined with the iron ingots we already have, that should be item pipes taken care of. It is. Nice. We do need a wrench as well to make that work. Is this say any wrench? I don't know if that's true. Let me uh, give that a try. If I put a pipe down here and here, can I use my create wrench to configure the extraction? If I shift right click here, it totally works. Look at that. So now you'll see at the top there, it says transferring four items every 20 ticks. Uh, that's one second in Minecraft. And uh, over here, you'll see all the items being pulled out. Nice. Twitch chat was asking if I could do this. That actually might work if we set the top there to extract. Because I think the crushing wheels do kind of hold the items in the top, which is interesting. And so from there, Chan, I think it should be as simple as taking this cobblestone generator, which I'm pretty sure is not going to break, like not going to get deleted when I break it. It isn't. Fantastic. We can place that here. Then we can go ahead and break this, which I also hope is not going to spew. It doesn't. Fantastic. And then what we can do is we can place this draw down here like that. We can then extract from the back of this drawer, like this. Just shift right click to set it to extract. That's going to pull the cobblestone out. It's going to put it into the crushing wheels. You'll see there that the crushing wheel has four cobblestone in it. And then that should, in theory, be, I think, automated gravel. Down here, we've got 21 gravel. Let me take all the gravel out of there. And then let's see if more gravel gets put in. Okay, so this doesn't work. I just end up getting the gravel. Like, if I walk close, the gravel gets put into me. So it looks like you can't do this. But I think the chutes should work. If we want to get the chutes, we are going to need a little bit more iron, but that's fine. Over here, we got four iron. Let's do this. That's hopefully going to wash somewhat quickly. And um, again, we can make our whole setup faster again now. We slowed it down when we uh, broke the wheel, but now we should be able to make this quicker. Fantastic, which is going to bring us more resources in eventually. Over here, 36 nuggets is perfect. Let's do this. Uh, we needed, I think it was just one iron plate, if I'm not mistaken. Let's do that. Kaplunk. Fantastic. And then if memory serves me right, I think it was like this, although it could have been. Yeah, I think it was the other way around, actually. Let me get one more iron plate. Kaplunk. And that is hopefully enough for a shoot, which is kind of like a create hopper. And if we place that in place of this item pipe here, like this, that should feed the gravel down. Look at that into the mesh. And I'm also fairly certain that uh, if you right click onto the shoot with a wrench, then you get these nice glass shoots as well, which uh, allow you to see the items that are sitting inside waiting to be transferred down. But look at that. We have basically automated the production of these resources. We've not fully automated it yet, because if we wanted to fully automate it, we'd have to take out things like the iron and the copper and the zinc and send them through the washing setup that we have here. But we have automated the production of the raw resources. So now that we have this, let's pivot back and see if we can't get this smeltery controller. So that is why we got glass earlier. Can I make the seared melter? This is the first thing that we need to get. I think the answer is yes. The seared bricks are in here. Let's craft up a seared ingot gauge. 
and then a seared melter. Nice. That is half of our uh, seared brick, though, so we are getting um, a little low. That's fine, though. So now, to make the smeltery controller, we're going to need a seared heater, a seared faucet, I believe, and a seared casting basin, because we place down the seared melter, I believe, on top of a seared heater. The heater is easy enough, though. It's just eight seared bricks, like so. And then we're going to place that down like this with the seared melter on top of it. The seared heater takes fuel to heat up the items inside the seared melter and melt them. In this case, we want to melt copper and then pull it out over some seared brick. That's fine. That means we need a casting basin and a seared faucet. We also need a spare seared brick as well, which is like four seared bricks. So I think that we need seven, eight, nine, ten, fourteen. I think, is what we need. 14 more seared brick, which is 14 more grout, which is just more gravel, sand, and clay. So clay we have here, sand we have on us and we can make more of. Gravel we're also, of course, making infinitely. We have just automated the production of... We got 12, which is so close. And, of course, we need to uh, swap this back to, uh, to fire mode now. We need to uh, get rid of you and then uh, replace down something that we can light on fire in the ground here. And a site will do the trick. Boom and boom. Let's do... Maybe one of these. I probably should have um, left the water there and done some sand washing first because it looks like clay is the thing that we are light on. And as we saw, we should be able to just do this to get more clay. Uh, but what I was saying over here is we just set this up, but we could probably do with like another set of crushing wheels now so that we can use them for kind of general purpose crafting, right? Because at the minute, we can't really use this now for turning gravel into sand. And so I guess what we could do here is we could move the cobble gen and the storage drawer to the opposite side because then you can just put another two crushing wheels on the front of the pre-existing crushing wheels and that does just work so if i were to put the cobble gen here it's getting a bit compact back there but i think that will work we can then grab this and put that up here on top of that cobble gen just like we did a second ago and then it'll just take one more item pipe to pull from here boom and Boom, there we go, that's still gonna work. But now, if we have eight spare stone, which I think we do, look at that, we've got 39 stone, we should be able to make another set of crushing wheels fairly easily. We just need the big water wheel again, which is actually completely fine, assuming we have a shaft, which of course we don't, that would be far too easy. But, oh, look at that, we made a water wheel before, fantastic. So let's do this, let's do this, then let's take this and surround it with the stone. And that gets us two more crushing wheels, which I believe we can just place directly in front of our pre-existing crushing wheels, and they're just gonna pass through the rotation. And so now, if we need more sand, we can just take more gravel, which, again, is being stocked up in here. We can just shift right click to uh, take out another stack of gravel, and then we can place that gravel into the top of this set of crushing wheels, like so, and that's gonna get us more sand. That sand, we can then combine with our gravel and our clay, and that should get us more than enough grout. We do already have 13 seared brick, and so over here we can do something like this to get a seared basin. We can do something like this to get a seared faucet. We're gonna put that here and here, like this. And then I think we just need one more seared brick here. So let's take all of you, and then let's do a little bit of grout crafting. Boom, and boom. I'm not gonna craft too much because I don't think we need it. And now, what we should be able to do is put down the uh, the fire gun over here. Now, the Twitch chat is telling me that trap doors might be a useful way to fix our setup. Now, we are a little bit low on food, <laughs> which is not ideal. What I might do real quick is get a little bit of wheat. I do intend to, uh, to utilize these cows, of course, but temporarily, if I just do something like this, it's going to stop us from walking incredibly slowly. Let me take some dark oak here and let's see if we can't make some trap doors if we get some trap doors it's possible we might be able to uh to fix our setup over here without having to, to mess around with it too much so i think what the twitch chat is suggesting here is that we can potentially pick up the water like so and then if we were to place down trap doors like here and here we could then close those trap doors like this and like this and i think the logic here is that going forward we could just leave let's say, the piece of andesite that we're gonna light on fire here, and then we could just put the water here. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense, I think, actually, because now we can, you know, wash, and then when we're done washing, we can pick that up, we can place down the flint steel, light that on fire, and then just drop the grout onto the depot, like that. And then we can just swap those kind of back and forth 
as and when we need. Whether or not the fire is going to burn the trapdoors, I actually don't know if trapdoors are flammable, but we can, of course, just make sure that we uh, put the fire out and then back over here. What was the final thing that we needed? Oh, of course, we just needed a seared brick, which is just four seared stone. That's going to go into the basin, and now we need to pull out the molten copper over the top of it. And for molten copper, all we need to do is put uh, some copper ingots into the melter. So copper we have if i put three copper ingots in there we do then need some fuel thankfully we have coal we'll put that in here that's going to begin heating up and melting the copper ingots and i think that should be four i think three should melt into four it doesn't it melts into three that's unfortunate uh, but is completely fine though because we do have a fourth copper ingot let's do this that's going to melt once we have four copper ingots of molten copper inside of the melter we can then right click on the seared faucet that's going to pull the molten copper over the seared brick and that is going to get us a smeltery controller nice and so now finally down here the smeltery controller can be used to make a furnace but it requires a tier three blood altar and the tier three blood altar requires more blank runes so in terms of the blank runes we do have blank slate here we can take that blank slate and we need to use the coagulated blood to make the blood orb. It does require 5,000 LP inside of our blood altar. Right now we've got 759, which is not really that much. We can get a little bit more, up to two buckets worth, uh, which is 2,000 LP. But if we want to get more, we're going to need more food because we're completely out of food here, which is, uh, is really not ideal. But uh, what we can probably do now, though, is we can probably get ourselves a sword and potentially kind of just take care of these cows here and i'm hopeful that we should be able excuse me my friend uh, that we should be able to uh, to utilize the smoking station here to cook the raw beef we totally can and so once again if we light the fire here we can drop the beef on here that's gonna get us some steak and of course we can just grow more cows, which I think is definitely something we'll do. Uh, between streams, I'll probably move this uh, grass area uh, to another little, you know, annex, a little extra section of the base, and we will utilize that as like an area to just kind of store a lot of cows. Look at that, that is a fantastic food source, especially compared to the bread, and that is gonna allow us to hopefully, somewhat quickly, get up to the required 5,000 millibuckets of life points. The only trouble with this is that we kind of have to lose our hunger a little bit to start refilling it again but uh, once we have that once we have the blood orb we can then craft stone and blank slates to get runes we do need 20 runes to get the tier 3 altar we also need glowstone as well which we currently don't have access to for that we're going to need a spout which seems pretty doable actually and i believe that's also going to require another deeper as well unfortunately though we're out of time for this episode of Project Sacrifice. And so next time, we'll come back, we'll look at getting glowstone, we'll use that to make our tier three altar. That tier three altar is going to allow us to actually finally make a regular Minecraft furnace of all things, which is, uh, is what we've been working towards. We can also look at some point soon at upgrading to steam power. For that, we do need a blaze burner, but the blaze burner looks pretty easy to make in this pack. And we could also look at doing some other automation stuff as well. And we can finally look at uh, moving over into Biomancy because it looks like we need to use Biomancy in order to get to diamonds as well, which are going to be required for moving forward. But we've got some of the basics down. Obviously, we're going to, need to do some more automation. You know, I'm happy with the gravel automation we've got here, but we do need to start taking stuff like the raw iron here and processing it fully uh, for the automation to actually be complete. And uh, I don't love this cobblestone, but it does do the job and does seem to work. Like I said, between streams, I'll do some more uh, cow producing so that hopefully we're not too light on food going forward. And at some point fairly soon, I think once we get the diamond, we can start looking at moving on into the next section of the quest book. But that is a problem for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Project Sacrifice there.